go. We're going to be kicking off this first semi-final. Harry Seldon versus Meliodor. Harry Seldon on the Pirate War we spoke about, and Meliodor on the Aggro Druid. Oh, How this relevant. Is, it's a paid big, off. Big win. <laughs> <laughs> paid off. It's a big win for the Druid here, though. One of the big things that it does is destroys the other aggro decks. And running into the Pirate Warrior this early is a big deal for him. It really is. And like I said, I think this is because both aggro decks got through. I mean, you know, uh, Meli Melido's Mage was, was banned, which is, you know, an aggro deck in itself a secret. But because this Druid got through, I do think, you know, one of these two decks is going to kind of lead the way in this series. And it's going to be whoever takes this win here. Yeah, well, you've got to fancy in general the aggro Druid. Um, and just going to go with that early curve. Interesting, choosing to keep the Hungry Crab. Um, it's going to be difficult to get it down, but turn one, one, one drop, turn two. I was going to say two, one drops, but now you've got the Mark of Lotus as a decision. It's definitely a tough call as well, because I do believe Melidor is running the other crabs as well. Oh. So, uh, you know what? I'll just check. I'm pretty Have sure I saw him for us. One. But uh, if he is, that's one less chance he's got a drawing into that from the Mulligan. He runs uh, one Golaka Crawler and two Hungry Crab. Okay. It's just, so I've spoken to a few players who play a lot of aggro Druid. Right. And in that instance where it's like the Hungry Crab, yeah, you know, it's a one drop, great, you can play it. They've all told me to hard mulligan for either, for the Golaka if you've got one, or just like, it could be a Raven, right? It could be an Enchanted Raven, extra stat yep. for the same cost. It could be, you know, a good two drop. It could be a, a better buff. It could be a pirate to pull patches. And the Hungry Crab, is in this matchup a one mana one two and that is it so yeah. i'm surprised it wasn't mulligan to be honest uh with it with the firefly then playing two of them on one turn would be tempting because you already had that exact firefly then you got the two one drops next could just turn. play a raven but you could just play yeah, a raven yeah. instead uh, or, or have a galaka crawler to just snipe a pirate that or that flappy often, bird even exactly that the galaka often just wins this matchup it's favored anyway yeah. but you drop the galaka and and it's game over. I so. mean, that is a, a case to the contrary. Though. If you are favoured, you can afford to go with slightly lesser hands on the side of caution. Uh, that yeah, is a thing you, you just can drill him. Oh, but no pat with Raven again. I can yeah. tell he's hitting people in the face. Exactly, and drawing the patches there on, uh, on the worst turn to do so. Actually, Melodar is knows that patches is in hand now. So there's one card. Uh, one card turned face up effectively, and now Meliodor does draw that Raven. And look, what, what's this crab done? Uh, and the Raven would have been a turn earlier. Sure. Would have been one card earlier in the lineup. But, but yeah, I mean, just, just like, what, what has this crab done? Nothing. It's Next not turn, you can play it, and then mark, but then you float in one mana. You know, suddenly, if this was a two drop, it would feel better. If this was a Galactic Crawl, it would feel great. So. You're feeling pretty smug about this, aren't you? Well, hey, you're no, right, no. though. You I'll, pointed I'll it out, and it's up. been shown true. Yeah, I'll hold my hands up. I only go, I'm going this hard on this mulligan because a lot of players who are better than me told me I've it was the correct exactly thing to do. I've had exactly the same discussion where yeah. I've actually sat there and kept it, and they're like, what are you doing? Yeah. And it's like, if, if they've not got Murlocs, it's generally just correct to throw it away and try and get one of your better cards. Not the best position at all for Harry Seldon now, but I mean, Meliodor's not got much going on yet, but that Mark of the Lotus is bigger than it looks. Plus one, plus one is so huge when you're trying to face off equally sized minions, yeah, obviously. If, if, if Meliodor does get a Innovate soon, then just getting that, that Hydra on turn five or maybe a little bit earlier. Oh, okay, fair game. Patches, patches. Um, but getting the Hydra is actually a huge deal because Warrior struggles to deal with that card, actually. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the other aggro decks can. They just bump into it a load of times with their little guys. But Warrior, it's a really weird aggressive deck in that it doesn't put many minions on the board ever. It never goes particularly wide. You might see three minions on a good draw, but it never has that much. It just hits you in the face with massive weapons is the main part of it. Yeah, and now there is the dub, uh, triple one drops you could play out now. Let's play the crab, the patches, and buff. It isn't a lot of value, though, but I think it's the only value you're really going to get in any any reasonable amount of time. Yeah, you're giving up a hero power hit in the face, and that just seems like nothing. Yep. Who do you think out of the four players left in this event would be the favorite at this point? Hmm. Yeah, because we're, we're talking, we've seen them all play now a couple of times. We're talking different tier to normal, how they survive. They're still good. I, th this might sound like bias, but I'm, um, well, hometown bias, but I actually do like Ben for this. I do. Uh, because I spoke to him right after his match. I, w I was outside, he literally walked to, up to me and went, what went wrong? You know, like, what did I mess up on? And he didn't seem like 
flustered. He didn't seem too excited. He didn't seem too upset. Obviously, he just won a match. Yeah. So he wouldn't be too upset, but you know what I mean? And I told him, I told him what I thought of the match, some, some places I think he could have improved. And he was like, okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, I see it. And yeah. he seemed quite relaxed. And I think that is worth a lot at this point in the tournament. As I know that the Spanish crowd are listening to the Spanish side of it's this safe. broadcast, <laughs> I, am, I thought that Meliador was the most accomplished player in terms of top hundreds and that sort sure. of stuff. But Ben has been on big stages for UK events more than once and has learned from those experiences. You know, they, they were big, they were streamed to sort of 15, 20,000 people. They were decent sized games, even though it was a smaller event. And he's had all that pressure. These guys have not. And I agree with you. Yeah, and now double Hydra. It was a whiff turn for Meliador, but now he can go Hydra into Hydra, and that might just get him there. Harry Seldon does have South Sea Captain just available now, which I do like. Just get it on the board. It's very awkward to deal with, and then all of your further minion drops just get better because of this one minion. I know how to deal with it. I'm going to play a Hydra. Yeah, but you, you're almost matching the Hydra damage with the minions, right? Sure. You know, and, and you have armor up, so it all this is almost an even board state. And if you draw any, you know, low attack minions, deck hand into Hydra, for example, is three damage, not two damage. Yep. So it's just something to consider that the Hydra is great for Meliodor, but everything is even and Harry Sterling gets to swing again and has eighteen weapons. In his hand. 18 weapons yeah, in his hand. World, 18 yeah. wielding. I always go to 18 when I pick a la overly large random number. 18,000, 18 million. million. I always just go 18 something. It's weird. Right. I remember that. But, uh, 18. Yeah. Uh, uh, the hidden powers cancel, by the way, right? One yeah, that, that's what armor. I mean. Yeah. Everything is almost exactly even, actually, when you look at this board. One power difference overall. But the Arcanite Reaper now. Harry Stalin's going to work out how he wants to deal with this. He could. He could Corcron and put the 4-5 into the Hydra. I mean, you're not losing much damage because you're, you're getting the 3 from the Hydra to the you, face. You're losing the repeat damage and the board presence mm -hmm. from the minions, but you still have a Arcanite Reaper and a South Sea Captain. Seems good. How much, how far do you think you can go with that? I don't know. It's a tough call. But if you, I feel like if you're not dealing with the Hydra this turn, you, you are never killing the Hydra. You are never hitting it unless it's with a cheap, like, small minion. And there we go. Harry Seldon said, no, I will beat this Hydra in a race. Yeah. And he's going to go for it. And I think he can. Yeah, because he can't afford to use the Hydra to trade. That's one of the key things. So it now just initiates race mode. Living mana makes that interesting, but not enough. At the moment, with the Corcoran Elite, there is lethal hanging around. There is. What's funny as well is the trade actually still makes it lethal. Is, is trade hero power still lethal? Not that that's a very good looking turn. Uh, trade hero power put into 13 and there will be three, uh, eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, it would be, yeah, it would be safe by one. If there's but, but no other damage it's drawn. It's safe by one, but what on earth do you do to win the game at that point? Really, I think what Meliodon needed to do was get a Tar Creeper, to be completely honest. And you see the, the detriment uh, of whiffing turn four. Turn four, yeah. hero power pass against Pirate Warrior. As an aggro deck, that was bad. No innovates drawn. No Tar Creepers drawn. Nightmare. No, nothing yet. I mean, he's drawn three five drops in very early turns. And you know how you avoid that? Go on. Give it to the Hungry Crab and play a Raven. Yeah. It would just be the same because you still got the same five drops draws, but... Well, he could have got, could have drawn innovate. Could have drawn an earlier Living Manor. Could have played Living Manor on five instead of Hydra, and then you can trade. You know, I, I don't know. I think, like I said, I was told that you just mulligan the, the crab and it makes sense. It's looked and, like it's made sense in this particular yeah. game. The sample size of one says story checks out. Yeah, and, and I played it a lot afterwards, and I was like, okay, I'm going to hard mulligan based on the game. And I do believe, though, that mulligan in Hearthstone, as Harris Seldon does finish up that game, obviously he did have the lethal available. I do believe that the mulligan is one of the hardest parts of the game and most impactful. It's, it sure is. I mean, first of all, if you are one of the people, which I'm not, who complain, oh, it's all curve. Well, you've got a mulligan to get the exact right things on curve anyway. If you're not one of those people, I'm just not one of those people. If you mulligan incorrectly, it shows you don't understand the matchup incorrectly. And also well, as well... you do understand the matchup incorrectly. I, I think the difference is you can mulligan for just good cards, right? Cards that you can either, depending on your deck, play one, two, three, or cards that are responses. You know, in Druid, you mulligan for, say, Wrath or Swipe versus an ag aggressive deck or Ram. There are general rules, but in certain matchups, you hard mulligan, and that is how you win the certain matchups, especially the harder matchups. 
You go all in on the heavy mulligan. Hope it works out because that is what will propel you further into a winning position. We're moving on to game two, though. Harry Selden, of course, on the Pirate Warrior again. This is last hero standing here at the DreamHack Hearthstone Grand Prix in Valencia. And Meliodor is going to be on the Quest Warrior. So this is just a... Pretty good matchup for Meliodor. I'd it say. is a fantastic matchup for Meliodor. And highlighting the Mulligan thing, there was times within the first week only, really, when people first started playing Taunt Warrior, that people kept the quest. Yeah, of course. In the same way you forget to attack with patches, it's like, I'm going to keep the quest because I should. And then slowly but surely, people are like, what am I doing? You know, some people realize it first game, don't get me wrong, but some people take a while, it's like, oh, why am I keeping it's, this card I never use? It, it's not intuitive to throw the quest a lot of the time, right? It feels like to put it in your opening hand. It always goes in your hand. It's a one drop. And you think, oh, well, what does a one drop? Well, I want to play some film one as, as Tom Warrior. It's not about that. It's about that quest being a different card that you could use a little bit later on. But yeah, this matchup, you definitely can throw away the quest. Uh, it's not a matchup I think there's a lot of debating, unlike some of others. Course, there's none, yeah. yeah. No in, in some of the matchups, it's like maybe you do, maybe you don't. People are still undecided. But this one, you do not need to kill your opponent. You just remove all of your opponent's resources, and then they're drawing one card a turn, and that is often not enough. And that's how it's going to be right now. He's got a couple of turns to survive Meliodor with nothing happening, but it's okay to hero power in these situations. That armor does add up, and yeah. there's not much you can do in the first two or three turns. Warax needs to hang around. And so, Harry Selden, a shake of the head, it's like, eh. I do like Froth in here. Frothing one of the cards that can get you there. Upgraded Reaper is another. Do you just execute this? Or, oh, sorry, or fishes this? One of those two things? Just get rid of it. Even though it's a really bad-looking trade, it is one of the cards that can just destroy you. Hmm. There aren't many cards you can't kill with your weapon. And you have another swing later. I wonder. Ooh, dangerous. Can you uh, ever attack once with the weapon and just hero power? And then next turn, attack another big minion. And then sleep. And then sleep. Because because Frothin two. cannot gain any additional damage because there are no minions that are going to hit minions. And then you, you have armored to negate the extra damage you've given the Frothin. Yeah. And then you can get a bigger sleep with the fishes off and save and execute. And look. Um, I think that might have been okay. I don't, I don't yeah. want to go into that too deep now because I can't quite picture how okay it would be. I, You'd want to test it, but it looked like an interesting also, line. Also, you get two armor ups over two turns, yes, which is important, and then you have nothing to do on turn four now. Now you do because of Acolyte, sure, but you, you know what I mean? It's not great. So now you could have done the, the double kill. You, you, the Frothings hit you for more yeah. or less the same amount. Fine, you armor up again. Next turn, you go armor smith. Turn after, you go armor smith. How are they getting through? Yeah, that would have worked out nicely. Of course, you would have taken a lot of damage doing it, but not a huge amount. And you're okay. Like you say, that armor protects some of that damage. Very interesting line. A um, bit late to reverse engineering here. Now, he went with the, the obvious looking line, the straightforward line. Which is fine. I'm not saying it's like he's going to lose because of that play or anything like that. I just thought it was interesting to look yeah. at because the frothing has, on one health, has no way to gain any additional damage. And there are no minions to trade into. So that frothing always does the three. And now, how can I reap it? It's going to help pile on a ton of damage. Yeah, this damage is coming thick and fast, but that's what pirates do. You know what Aliyah must do? They slow that damage right down. Yeah, I'm just thinking, though, if, if uh, Harry Seldon actually gets an upgrade effect and keeps this Arcanite Reaper going, yes. like Reaper into Deckhand to kill one, Reaper into Deckhand to kill another, that is very clean considering his board state and is a good spot. <coughs> And that's where it's going to go. I mean, face is the place. Even I go face with this deck sometimes. Good. I approve. Thought you'd like that. Uh, defending against the Acolyte, of course. And look, you know, Malidol's on 13. We can see that there are the armor smiths available. So that's going to slow it down. But the weapon swing is going to put him to 10. He has to because he wants to clear this patches up with the yep. Acolyte. Going to put him to 10. There's still Arcanite Reaper. There's still double deck hand in hand. Double deck in hand. There you go. And... A single upgrade effect dramatically alters the outcome of this game, I feel, if it's drawn next turn. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at the line where you put the Acolyte into the Naga Corsair, and then you sleep, and then you pray. Maybe. 
So you, that you always that, hit the that dread cost that could be dead learned. It could. Same. Still, we're still within the five damage, but it's, but, do, but it's happening you're, you're anyway. Five anyway. You left it up. Five yeah, more. you left it alive. So. But yeah, that's a, that's the line you can look at now. You can bump and execute or bump and sleep, whichever you fancy. You only draw one card, but you get to armor up, and you probably don't die next turn a lot of the time. Really tough, isn't it? He's got to do this. This always happens in whatever yeah. line you want to do. Bump and execute. he is. He's going to yeah. go with this line. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, this means that you're... Oh, rewarded. This means your Ali Armorsmith has more chance of gaining you more armor as well. Getting with that Nargle there means that the swing... just It just makes it better for you to get rid of those big minions when you've got a 2-7 coming down two Ooh. turns in a row. So, Mortal Strike? <laughs> I think you Mortal Strike this minion, right? I think Four, you have to. Five. Because if you swing with the weapon, then the deck hands aren't live. Sure. So I think you have to Mortal Strike, put the patches in, and then play the double deck hands and go. And go, go, go. The green oh, light. Hang on. It's just lethal, right? Is it? Yeah. What if ten. I missed? It's yeah. 10. Of and course you do this. Yeah, I, was, I thought it was 9. <laughs> because yes. you didn't react to the play, I thought it wasn't lethal. <laughs> when you said, I think you do this, I'm like, yeah, you do. Yeah, that's going to be game. And Harry Seldon does go through uh, go through this Taunt Warrior of Meliodor. And it, I, I've just got to think, would Sleep, would sleep with the uh, Fishes made a difference? So he, I, he wouldn't have died that turn. Mm -hmm. but and he, then he could have got Armorsmith down. And then Armorsmith again. Armorsmith always soaks two hits. So that's plus four armor. He would have armored more, up twice as well. He would have taken more damage from the frothing. Uh, he would have taken three additional. But, but he, he would have armored up five. twice. Did he take two fives on Naga in the end? He did. Or did he not? I think he took one five. So he only took the same amount. He may have still yeah. been dead, in fairness. I'm not quite But he would have armored up twice and wouldn't have had to do that clear with the Naga, so he could have played the Armorsmith on five. I don't know. Again, as me and Sotlo have said it multiple times this event, I'd love to rewind time and go over things again and replay it out. Tell it me about it. Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean Hearthstone? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. I don't think the clock goes back that far, Lorinda. There, um, there weren't <laughs> clocks back then. Exactly. Harry Seldon, though, is going to be on the Pirate Warrior for the third time in this series. And one more game away. And he just won the unfavorable. Now he's against Paladin. Not impossible. Spike Ridge Steed almost wins this matchup. But that is, in fact, the reason why everyone is playing Spellbreaker in the list. And Harry Seldon, I believe... Oh, no, he's playing one. Who was it playing two? Someone was playing two this event. Oh, I haven't seen that yeah, one. Yeah, someone's playing two I, I know spell it, I know, I, I've seen it before. I haven't seen it for a week or two, but it is a it is a deck that I've seen around because, especially in Last Hero Standing, where you can target a bit better, yeah. you can definitely really tune your decks to your weaknesses. Also, Zell, if you're never banning Paladin and you expect Paladin, which you just do, I think almost every single play we've seen to, uh, in this event has brought Paladin, then, well, yeah, two spell breakers is good. The reason you only play one is because you're not always facing Paladin on ladder. Yeah. <laughs> or, well, in theory. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean, though, right? So having two, if you're always expecting Paladin, if you're leaving Warrior up, yeah. in which, you know, uh, Harry Seldon has, then two Spellbreakers is good it, again. It is one of the things I really like about Last Hero Standing. Uh, I, like, I like both formats. I, I don't have the complaints about either of them. But Last Hero Standing does lend itself to you build your lineup, and then you have to rebuild the decks to cover holes. I, I find that really interesting. I completely agree. Melida. Does have a pretty reasonable opening, though. Getting the stuff on the board first is always nice. Harry Seldon has the Fiery Smoke Axe and also access to a few pirates, but maybe now a little bit heavy on the weapons with the Arcanite Reaper. I think any cheap-ish cheap, cheap -ish pirate, even a Blizzard Raider for two, mm -hmm. would feel a little bit better as he is on the coin. It would, but at least this is a hand where you're going to get the patches down. You're, you're just going to get a decent buildup of stuff from now on. Uh, your one Iconite Reaper too heavy, but rather that than draw no weapons. This is really funny, actually. Harry Seldon was hovering the Naga, because he has coin. And, like, this beats the Stonehill. Because Stonehill yes. o often is the, a huge roadblock to Fiery War Axe, right? It's, it's a pain. You don't have that one damage a lot of the time. But if the Stonehill comes down, coin Naga actually feels pretty good, because you're not bothered about trying to get the Cultist down uh, for the plus one effect too early, because you have two Arcanite Reapers. To coin, coin Naga into South Sea? Okay. okay. <gasps> oh, baby. BRB, handful of good stuff. Yeah, oh my. Sometimes, sometimes this deck just gets the job done. 
And I, I just, think it's going to this time. There's a gleam in Raven's eye here it, as he watches the smoke occur. Yeah, I just like... That was already in Harry Seldon's mind, the coin Naga, and the fact that he drew the course there was humongous. Like Death a razor window to the rescue. Uh, we might need to get there first. I, I think that's the problem. You might need to, you know, just casually get an additional six turns out of this game, which... Oh, easy. Double Arcanite Reaper, the fact that he can... Got a, not a dead turn next turn, but a slightly weaker turn with just a three drop at the moment. But Arcanite Reaper into a more than likely cultist proc on turn six, because by then you've probably got a cheap enough pirate to combine with it. And then worse... Oh, no, weapon removal comes down. Second Reaper, go. This opening has actually been nuts, and I think it's all down to that Naga. It's interesting, actually. Some of the most ridiculous pirate wins are the ones that look bad in the opening hand. Yeah. Like, you haven't got a one or a two, and you just murder them on three, four, it, and five. It's because the weapon buffs just change the rules of Hearthstone, to be honest. Like, Warax should not be allowed to do four, yet it did, and it actually just stopped so... <laughs> But imagine if the upgrade wasn't there. <laughs> it just shouldn't be allowed. Are you outdoor well, peacekeeper now? No, it, yeah, for weapons? Uh, no, I enjoy it. So I'm all for it. I like doing things I'm not allowed to do. I do them fairly often and I get in trouble for it, but it's worth <laughs> I usually have to sit next to you when you're doing it. Yeah. It's a weird sentence, Linda, and I just agree. Sorry about that. It's just uh, terrifying. The captain now, you know, as I said, coming down on four, buffing all of these pirates, patches still alive. And you can see the shape of the rest of this game. Arcanite Reaper mm -hmm. into deck, uh, sorry, uh, South Sea um, Raider for, you know, plus a million, million, whatever on the attack. 18 uh, million. And then, and then Cultist combined to give Arcanite Reaper an additional durability and damage. And frankly, there ain't a lot that Meliodor can do about it. If you could find a way to get five more mana, he'd be fine. Sure. That's all I've got. Otherwise, give, it's just going to be Paladin. Reaper and Weep coming up. Give Paladin double innovate and a coin. And he still might not win. Nah, he would. Deathwing will probably win this game. Maybe. Now not, that not so sure. There is the trade with the Silver Hand Murloc into the 4 to 3, and then Consecrate, and you can drop the Footman just to try and stem the tide and draw something else. But the problem is the big draw now would be the would be the Spike Ridge Steed. But there is no way he can stick a minion. He just cannot. And stemming the tide, I mean, this is the tidal hand that's being stemmed, to be fair. Wow. Yeah. Wow. By the pirates who know how to master the tide. Wow, you got, you're going deep on this one, Lorinda. Yeah. Boss. <laughs> it is going to go, as we hear a mystery voice, it's going to go with the Consecrate. He, did, he could have gone for the True Silver trade away the patches with the 1-1, one -one, but it still kind of leaves the same issue. You still take nine this turn. It's going to be a little bit rough. <laughs> I do think there are no other options except for this Reaper, though. I mean, it seems good. The, the frothing also seems good. The cards just seem good. Actually, like the Reaper, you have upgrade, right? You have a guaranteed upgrade next turn. Just get the yeah. Reaper equipped. I mean, you I'm, you I'm not even, arguing. I'm just staring and waiting for it to hit him in the face. You can even swing the Reaper into a gold Shire Footman just for the lols. So, Spain looking rather good for being halfway towards that All-Spanish final. Yeah. Only, uh, only Ben is going to potentially stand in the way if this game goes the way we're thinking. And we said it at the start of this series, you asked me who I thought was my favorite for this tournament at this point. And I, and I said, Ben, I, I, I think he's actually pretty cool, calm, collected and feeling great. But Harry Seldon must be feeling great now because this has been a stomping and this is I'm not even aiming that at Meliodor. Like, Harry Seldon has just nuts people with Pirate Warrior, and there's not been a lot Meliodor could do about it overall. Yeah, you there's did been a couple say of spots. in game one. Yeah, there's been a couple of spots, but in general, th this has been such an aggressive open in every game. I do think that Hungry Crab has a lot to answer for, though. Yeah, it's even hungrier now. And Meliodor is trying to find a way here to get the Curator into Tyrion without taking too much. That is a thing he has. To, we have to watch out for. While we're sitting here celebrating on behalf of the Spanish play people, you know, the, he's trying to wiggle a way out of this. There's 11. The problem is the minion pressure. Uh, the oh, problem is yeah. this giant Leroy charging nonsense. Mr. Leroy Jenkins is going to end this game.
And uh, well played there coming out from Meliodor. Got at least has top four. Got, well, I mean, that's a, great, that's a great result, but you have to feel bad about getting 3 0 by Pirate Warrior. It, it, it was kind of rough. Did you watch the Druid Games, Hall? Did I you? did not, honestly, no. Oh. I, I, I was walking through the floor at the time, just uh, taking in some of the side so, tournament as well. So you have, um, I'll just like, break down the opening. It Go was on. about, my, my question about the mulligan, we'll see if you.